morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told out of voice of radio, so today we're going to be taking a little bit of a look at a Florges deck, which is actually doing kind of well over in Japan. I've seen this seeing a little bit of success, and it is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful deck. Now, it is all built around, shockingly enough, Florges. Uh, Florges has an ability, Wondrous Gift. Once during your turn, before you attack, you may flip a coin. If heads, put an item card from your discard pile on top of your deck. Okay, so it's item recovery. It's also a stage two. So if we're really going to be taking advantage of this, we are going to need to have an item card that is frankly worth recovering over and over again. We're going to need something that is worth getting the stage two out and flipping a coin on ability. Now, to be fair, recovering item cards at the moment is exceedingly difficult. We've lost Puzzle of Time, and that's even been banned and expanded. So, you're basically down to things like Oranguru or the new Excadrill, where you're actually using an attack to recover. That's about the only way you're getting them back. Unless you use something like this. And yes, it's on a coin flip, and yes, it's a stage two. But frankly... It's the best option that we've got right now, so get over it. Yeah. So, floor just then. What are we getting back? And the answer is Clefairy Doll. That's right. Although Lily's Polka Doll, as it's currently called, Clefairy Doll was what it was called back in the base set. And essentially, it's very much like RoboSup. It's a 30 HP Pokemon, but it's an item card. And you can put it down as a 30 HP Pokemon, and you can't attack, you can't retreat, etc, etc. Just sits there in the active, but it doesn't give up a prize. And it is actually a little bit better than Clefairy Doll, because Clefairy Doll and RoboSub, you had to discard to get rid of them if they were stuck in the active. This you actually put on the bottom of your deck. You can get it back. And the other great thing here is that your opponent is heading into a format where there's no Guzma, there's no Counter Catcher, they're going to have Great Catcher, but that will only get them a GX off the bench. So if you don't play any GXs, they can't gust anything. Or Custom Catcher, where well, they can only play... Well, they can play four in their deck, but they've got to play two at the same time to use it. So they can only actually gust with it twice during a game. And even then, if one's prized or they have to discard one early or whatever, it gets super awkward. So gusting is going to be much, much more difficult. So your opponent is going to have to go after Clefairy Doll. So you just keep flipping with Florges. And keep putting Clefairy Doll in the active. And then your opponent's just not taking any prizes. Now there is an attack here as well. Two Fairy, one Colorless Energy. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from Dragon Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. Now, that's actually looking pretty good because Garchomp and Giratina are looking really good next format. Reshiram and Zekrom are looking pretty good next format. It looks like there's going to be a bunch of good Dragon Pokemon, but this deck plays no energy. There's no energy in this deck, so I wouldn't worry your pretty little head about it, ladies and gentlemen. If I'm honest with you, just chill, because you ain't going to be attacking. Cool. So if you're not going to be attacking, what other Pokemon do we need to play? Well, firstly, we need to play Mew. Because I've told you there's not going to be any gusting, but that doesn't mean your opponent can't hit the bench. There's going to be spreading Pokemon. The new Noivern springs to mind as a really good spreading Pokemon. And then you've always got stuff like Pikachu and Zekrom, who, using their GX attack at least, can hit the bench. So you play Mew. And then your opponent can't hit the bench. And you are sitting pretty. Lovely. And we play a couple copies of Rebombi. Now, there's been a bunch of Rebombi lately, but we are focusing on the Rebombi, which came out in Lost Thunder. This is the one, as long as this Pokemon is on your bench, whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand, prevent all effects of that card done to your fairy Pokemon in play. Now, this is very important because at the moment in Japan, they've still got Guzma. So that means that they can still 
stop Guzma with this. There is an argument that this is going to be less important when Guzma is rotated. So if you're playing this deck post-rotation, there is an argument to, to leave out the Rabombi. I mean, what you could do is play something with a little bit of draw power, for instance. Maybe the new source buck coming out that once during your turn lets you draw a card. Just so you can then draw a little bit faster those Clefairy Doll. But that really is the crux of the deck here. Using Florges to try and continually recover your Clefairy Doll. Have your Clefairy Doll constantly in the active. And then your opponent just never takes any prizes. Now, one of the supporter cards that becomes really, really good when you're playing this kind of tactic is Rosa. Now, Rosa just came out in Dream League over in Japan, and Rosa is a very, very good card. And now, you have to have had a Pokemon KO'd the previous turn, but Clefairy Doll totally counts. And then you can search your deck for a Pokemon Trainer and Basic Energy, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So as long as you've got a Clefairy Doll or a Lily's Poke Doll in the deck, you can get it out with this along with a Pokemon. And, well, you would be able to get a basic energy except for the whole you don't play any basic energy. But you should have a Pokemon KO'd basically every turn because of Clefairy Doll. So that does mean that you can play around quite nicely here and... Just make sure you keep getting your Clefairy Doll out. It's a really fun supporter to be playing. Now, in terms of other trainer cards we need to worry about, Professor Al's lecture here is really good just for getting set up in the early game. We're not going to have many ball search cards post-rotation, so being able to use Professor Realm's Lecture is going to be absolutely huge. And honestly, the list I'm going to show you at the end only actually plays two nest ball and no ultra ball which means that this deck is going to survive rotation so much better than the vast majority of decks i think you need to play gladian here gladian's really nice because it lets you get cards out from your prizes so if you have a clefairy doll prize you can get it back it's not the end of the world you can work without gladian but it does give you a nice little advantage rare candy is obviously super important here because you're playing a stage 2. And Recess Stamp becomes really nice if you lose a couple of prizes in the early game. Because your opponent might take a KO or two before you're really set up and established. But let's say they've taken 3 or 4. Then all of a sudden you play Recess Stamp to put them down to a hand of 2 or 3. And they're just not KOing your Clefairy Doll here. And that's kind of hilarious. Lusamine is also a really, really fun card to play here. Lusamine, it just gets back stadiums and supporter cards. Now, you play Lieutenant Surge's strategy so that you can play two supporters in one turn if you need to, but it just means that you can get your Rosa back, etc., if you're so inclined. And Bill's Analysis works really well here as well, because Bill's Analysis just gets your Clefairy Doll that little bit easier that little bit faster it lets you look at the top seven cards of your deck reveal two trainer cards put them into your hand you're really digging for those clefairy doll i know it's called lily's poker doll but i much prefer clefairy doll you can search them much quicker and that really is the goal of the deck here it's what you need to do we also play poker gear 3.0 for the same reason gets you rosa after a ko gets you bill's analysis if nothing has been ko'd yet and then you'll need some kind of Pokemon recovery. Pre-rotation Rescue Stretcher will do fine, but you'll probably want to play a Brock's Grit post-rotation. This is a slow deck where you can afford to play Brock's Grit, plus you're playing Lieutenant Surge's strategy anyway. Honestly, when we hit the rotation, we're really not losing very much at all. You're losing those two Nest Ball, but you're only playing two Nest Ball, so that's fine. You're not playing anything like Guzma that everyone else is worried about. You're losing Rescue Stretcher, but because you're playing a very slow deck, you can easily play Brock's Grit over it. I should mention we're playing Sky Pillar here as our stadium of choice, which is really quite nice. Just another way to protect your bench. Prevent all effects of the opponent's attacks, including damage done to bench Pokemon. It's just a nice cover here for Mew as well. It does the same thing, but it works quite nicely.
But the fact of the matter is that you've got your Clefairy doll, and then Rosa helps you set up your Florges, and Florges gets your Clefairy doll back. This deck is going to work very, very well post rotation. The one big issue I have with the deck what if your opponent knows what you're doing and just doesn't play any cards? What if they just put out a couple of big Pokemon knowing you can't attack and just draw pass every turn? That That's going to be a little bit awkward, unfortunately. Because essentially, you're not winning by any other way than decking your opponent out. You're trying to make sure that they run out of cards in their deck before they've taken six prizes, and then they lose because they can't draw a card to begin their turn. But if they just play fewer cards than you, then you're going to deck out before they do. But all you need is some kind of recovery, something like Brock's Grit. Just something to keep putting Pokemon back into your deck every turn so that you don't deck out and your opponent does. As long as you've got something which will put cards back into your deck, you will be absolutely fine here. Do make sure you save a couple Pokemon to put back in your deck, please. Much better in a best of one where your opponent doesn't have chance to know what you're playing until they've already played too many cards and it seems like the kind of deck that will lead to a lot of draws but as long as you can play fast enough recover your clefairy doll often enough and make sure that you can keep a couple of cards in your deck this is a deck of a lot of potential and it will survive the rotation very nicely indeed and I think it's a deck that most of you haven't thought about yet. So I thought it was a fun one to profile. But I'd like to know what you think, ladies and gentlemen. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wassy plays where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any pokemon in but by far the most important thing as always Look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.